Welcome to Inside the Broncos, football in the West. Larry Pulaski here from Channel 12. And as always, Jeff Caves coming in, sliding down the freeway today to help us tape this show on a snowy weekend in Boise, Idaho. No problem. And who's coming to town? No problem. Well, here comes Rocky. <laughs> here comes Rocky. Bitter Rocky. Boy, yeah. he, get, he went off this week. It was a beautiful thing to behold. And when the old man gets bitter, he really gets bitter. I dig it. <laughs> well, how would you like to be him? He was here in December for the potato bowl, freezing his butt off then. So now he's got to come back to play Boise State in November, a year later. It's like his second trip here on the blue. You know he doesn't like that. And, you know, why we're not wearing blue on blue, I don't quite understand. If it really got under his skin, we're wearing black. That's a little bit easier on his eyes, I guess. I, I, I don't know how that's going to work. It's just a welcome to town. Here's some snow. Here's some black, a blackout. I, I did never didn't understand. I saw that at the start of the year on the schedule. I went, were they really thinking about that when they put that promotion together? I'm not sure if anybody was thinking about that. I don't know. There'll be, there'll be, a, lot of black, there'll be a lot of black ski coats, I guess. I, I, I don't know. I hope everybody has black in terms of a heavy, thick coat. So we're going to need it. Yeah, it, it's going to be a, a nasty cold yeah. day, but uh, let's talk a little bit about the national rankings. Now, Boise State starting to get a little chatter for the group of five, right. and I mean a little chatter. It's yeah. just, uh, you know, also included in the conversation is Boise State. Your thoughts on where that's all going and how that group of 15 or 14 or however many people are left on that committee how do you think they're doing so far? Well, there's 12, and we don't know what they think about the group of five. Jeff Long, the uh, steering committee guy, or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call him, gave some comments that, you know, yes, Boise State, Colorado State, they looked at, Marshall, they looked at, Northern Illinois, and East Carolina. Yeah, we looked at them. Do we have a ranking for them? No. Uh, what are you going to do if you don't have a ranking for them after December 5th? Uh, they don't know yet. They, they, they hope something falls from the sky and fixes that, I guess. They'll probably just put their heads together, put the five teams together, and pick one is what I think, is I, like they do in a lot of other things. Yeah, well, it's, you know, a lot of times it's just going to play out. we got a lot of head-to-head -head games left. A lot of games are going to make a determination. I don't think their decision is going to be as difficult once we get, you know, four more weeks down the road than we see right now, or it could be just absolutely horrific. I mean, you it could depends. have a bunch of teams all tied up. It just depends how you feel about Marshall at the end of the day. Well, one thing that I was uh, thinking about was the Sagarin ratings. Now, if you remember a few years ago, the Sagarin ratings were kind of pushed into the backfield. Nobody really cared about it much anymore. Right. It was about the AP and the, and the coaches' poll. But now the Sagarin, especially strength of schedule, which is all what he's all about, the Jeff Sagarin ratings have all of a sudden come back into the public eye. Is Boise State in good position? It looks like it when you pull those ratings uh, out. It depends who we're comparing them to. If you're comparing to Marshall, yeah. You know, because Marshall's played teams that are underwater in terms of their records, and, and that won't change. Uh, but Boise State's not going to really, I don't think, help themselves too much more. Utah State will have a good record. And uh, we know that it, right now San Diego State has a winning record, um, and Wyoming probably not. So it's, it, I don't think it's going to be a much of a boost. All right, Jeff. Well, thanks for that uh, analysis. Congratulations to Brooke Ash, our winner of the San Diego State tickets this week. Still have time to get tickets to the Utah State game. Go to our website and sign up right now. We'll be back with more Inside the Broncos Football in the West, brought to you by Even Green Technology. Football in the West is brought to you by Even Green Technology, the Treasure Valley Solar Authority, and Steve's Hometown Ford and Steve's Hometown Toyota, 100% committed to your satisfaction. Also by Western Heating and Cooling, turn to the experts, and Leisure Time Spas and Hearth Products. Come see us at Leisure Time. You'll be glad you did. We're back with Inside the Broncos, football in the West, brought to you by Even Green Technology. Well, Jeff, the New Mexico game is way past in the rearview mirror, but we got to go back to that game. Now, here's the defensive stat sheet from that game. <laughs> yeah, that's probably what they did. Unbelievable. Yeah. What yeah. a nightmare for a defensive coach to go through. The yeah. first half of that game was absolutely something that you can only witness in a nightmare. It was like 
is this really happening? But it was. It did happen, and, and I think the, one of their biggest challenges was it happened to the interior of the defense, Bo. They ran a lot of power. They ran right between the guard and the center. They ran off the guard to the tackle. And Boise State's guys were ready for more, you know, uh, plays sideways, not plays straight at them. They were running north and south, and they were running right by them. And their timing was impeccable. And Boise State, frankly, got their butt kicked up front. You can fitting gaps, yeah, 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 because it's hard to fit a gap when you're going like that, <laughs> you know. And, and they couldn't get out. You can't get off a block when you're back here. Yeah. And uh, they just got caught on their heels. And they got their butt kicked. But to their credit, they kept, got up off the mat and changed it in the second half. Well, they absolutely did. And when you're playing New Mexico, you know the passing game is going to be a second thought, third thought, fourth thought, maybe no thought at all. They did actually complete seven passes, which was quite a few for them. But it was amazing once they got by the line of scrimmage, and you're right. When you saw the replays, it was even more dramatic than watching it live because you could see how big those holes were. And then there was just no secondary response uh, that was appropriate to be able to tackle anybody downfield. It was just an overall collapse. But then how do you account for the second half, Jeff, where they come back and only give them 88 yards? Yeah, and there was no strategic change, according to Marcel Yates, the defensive coordinator. Who had already made one in the first half. He did make some personnel changes, yeah. though. And I, and I think at some point, Corey Bell was just taking the wrong angles. And, and, and he's sometimes a little stiff where he can't turn and run and change directions as quick as he would like to. And, of course, they had to make a change there. And Blank Reno, uh, we now come to learn, had an injury situation, so that may have been bothering him. And they got Martirano in there, and I thought they had much better uh, flow to the ball with more cautiousness and smart in how they got there. And other times, they'd run downhill and hit the hole, and the pack was gone. So it was, a, it was very challenging for them to figure it out. And, you know, you, I've been in games like that where you just, no matter what you do, I can remember playing Fresno State when I was a junior. We couldn't do anything to stop their running game. They ran around us, they ran at us, they ran over us, and you're just powerless to do anything. It's just a bad feeling. Thank goodness the offense showed up to play, and Grant Hedrick was spectacular, got some national awards this week. What a performance by that offense. Yeah, you know, ever since the Air Force game, he's really come on, Poe. 11 touchdowns, two interceptions uh, since that game where he was benched and had a miserable time uh, there in Colorado Springs. So a lot of credit goes to him. I was really impressed with his running. I thought that was really critical. It, it was absolutely critical. Excellent job by all. All right, when we come back, it's time to talk a little Mountain West football. We'll look at the standings. We'll talk about a couple of games that we're going to highlight this week on Inside the Broncos, Football in the West. Welcome back to Inside the Broncos, Football in the West. Brought to you by our friends at Even Green Technology, the Treasure Valley Solar Authority. All right, the Mountain West Conference features a couple of really interesting games, and let's just kick it off with Nevada going to the Air Force Academy to take on the cadets. This could be a really interesting showdown with a team in Air Force that's got nothing but better all year long. Yeah, they really are good. And, you know, you talk about weather forecasts. Well, there's a 50% chance of snow in Colorado Springs, and there's a 100% chance that Air Force run game is going to get stuffed down Nevada's throat. <laughs> so you don't have to, you know, do this. You don't have to game plan this one. They're going to run the ball on Nevada, and I think successfully. Uh -huh. I looked at what happened with Boise State's sure. defense. They were stout, 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 but then they gave up a lot of plays. They got in bad position based on the offense turning the ball over, and Fajardo was, has, has deteriorated. He has not done as well as he should, could, and would, and it's kind of went with their football team. And if he can resurrect himself in this game, then maybe they can get themselves into the Mountain West Championship. But Jeff, isn't that a trait of a running quarterback? They're going to wear down as the season goes on. I don't care if it's an 11-game schedule or you try to do it in the NFL. It just doesn't last for the whole season. And sooner or later, there's got to be a drop-off. And this will be a bad time for a drop-off because this Air Force offense is solid and their defense is just as we saw when Boise State went down there and played, they could create some havoc for people. Yeah, and you know, about quarterbacks, when you, when you take hits, it starts affecting your throw. It starts affecting you in the pocket. It starts affecting you not wanting to take another hit in a specific area. And I, I don't know how Cody's feeling exactly, but that would fit the description. They ask him to do so much. Well, t we talked about bitter coaches in the open. How about another old bitter coach, Bob Davey from New Mexico, who didn't really like some calls that were made in that game for Boise State, taking his uh, New Mexico team 
over to Logan to yeah. Logan to yeah. play Utah State, who's another defense that's just spectacular. You know, there's there's two really really good defenses. We're going to see one this weekend in San Diego State. And Utah State's the other one. Exactly. I mean, you look at run defense, which I think a lot of coaches do first to see what that's all about. Number six in the country. Wow. And they're without Thackle. That's a great stat. They're, they're without the best. Yeah, he's the best of the best. The best of the best linebacker in the conference. And so those Vigil brothers are unbelievable. And they got some monster D linemen. That'll be a great matchup in Albertson Stadium with Boise State and Utah State. But in the meantime, I think they'll shut New Mexico down. I just don't think New Mexico will travel into Logan well. 50% chance of snow. It'll be cold. They've just totally Checked probably they, they probably just left it all on the field against yeah. Boise State and they're a little disappointed well, I, would think. I, I would think that's absolutely the case and you know it seems like there's some defenses that can figure out that option and there's some that can't and I don't recall Utah State ever having a whole lot of trouble with the option style uh, offense so yeah. I think they'll be able to hold up all right when we come back it's time to make some picks and we are as you know two of the best in town just go against yeah, us. Just, You'll make money. Just go ask, ahead. Just ask us. We'll yeah, tell you. Yeah. All right. We'll be back with that on Inside the Broncos Football in the West after this. Well, it's time now on Inside the Broncos Football in the West for us to be embarrassed and make fools of ourselves. So let's just get it started. Let's go to the tail of the tape. Last week, at least we had some winners. We did have some losers. And there's definite evidence that we are losers. So this information is for fun, and we're having fun with it, aren't we? <laughs> so let's right. see what we're picking this week yeah. in our nightmare picks. JC, you're getting on the Vandal Bandle wagon. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured I might as well start going with them because, frankly, they have played well. They are. They gave San Diego State everything they needed. Troy is really struggling. They're at home. Seniors, last game. I think they're going to get a good win here. All right. Go Vandals. Uh, you're also going to get on the Air Force bandwagon. You know, I think that that's a really interesting pick. And as we said in our segment, they are just, they're tough at home and they're playing tough right now. Yeah, and I look at Boise State's effort with them and Nevada defensively is nothing to write home about. And they're going to have their hands full and the weather will be tough. So running will be important. All right. Well, I like that pick because I'm going to take it too. <laughs> that's how much I like it. I'm going to go the same way. You can't argue with success. All right. Moving on here. I'm also going to take Arizona. Uh, over the Huskies, and we're going to talk about why the Huskies are having issues in our next segment for the Pac-12. They've got some problems, uh, so I'm going to go with them. Now, Jeff, you're going to take the Broncos. I cannot say that this makes a lot of sense, but they're due to win big against San Diego State, and if there's a time that they can get them, I think now is the time. Well, they've, you know, San Diego State lost by 11 to Fresno and 16 to Nevada on the road. And Boise State's offense is lighting it up. Yeah. They've scored, I think we'll talk about it, but Boise State's offense is gaining a lot of yards, scoring 38 points. I, I like them to cover here. And when you look at who they've beat, it's not a very nice list. It's a list of losers. So anyway, we're going to both go on the Bronco bandwagon, giving up the two touchdowns, and we're going to go from there. When we come back, it's time to talk Pac-12 football right here on Inside the Broncos Football in the West. Welcome back to Inside the Broncos Football in the West. Pac-12 attention time for us now. And behind us, you see Washington Stadium. Well, the Huskies aren't there this week. They're going to Tucson to take on the Wildcats. Yeah, and, and unfortunately, I think the Huskies are going the wrong way right now. Uh, Coach Peterson's teams have always finished strong, gotten better through the year. You can't say that about this year's group right now. They can still turn that around. A lot of discipline issues, a lot of injury challenges. He doesn't have the depth of the kind of kids that he wants. I think there was some lame duck recruiting with Sarkeesian. I don't know how much he trusts his quarterback because he doesn't make a lot of mistakes, but he doesn't make a lot of plays. And they're the last ranked offense wow. in the Pac-12. Wow. Overall total offense, dead last. That just doesn't cut it. That won't work. Well, and you know the thing with Coach Pete as he was going in there is they thought they were getting an offensive guru, the guy that, you know, architected two Fiesta Bowl wins, blah, 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 and they've gotten kind of a vanilla version, at least offensively there, but uh, in your opinion, they're going south in more than one way, right? Well, defensively, <laughs> they had a lot of challenges yeah. there. They've thrown people off the team, nine total, Ouch. dismissed his top corner, and then they got 
they got torched eventually against UCLA because of that. Now their top tackler, their top uh, guy to get pressure on a quarterback could be out with a shoulder injury. So Arizona's hungry. They're fighting for a berth in the Pac-12 championship game to take on Oregon. Yeah. It just doesn't add up well for them. You know, I was reading some stuff this week uh, that Coach Hawkins said, and, and Dan basically said, listen, you can't install a culture in one year. Right. And this is a culture change. Steve Sarkeesian, totally different cat than Chris Peterson. Totally different culture that they're trying to bring into that place. And Husky fans, you're going to have to be a little bit patient. And if you're not, you're going to be really disappointed. Just give it some time to sort out. All right, Utah goes to Stanford this week. Utah, you know, started off so good. And they've had a couple of losses now in a row. And they're just probably reeling a little bit. they got a quarterback issue that kind of gets settled. And then it's not settled. And but that offense is just in disarray. Yeah, it's tough. I mean, I just give it to Booker and let him run. He's, they he's, might as well. He's strong. That's what he does well. I think that's what they do well, playing off of that. I think their defense is strong enough to, to win football games on its own at times. They're running across a team at Stanford. It's almost like a mirror image. They don't have a Booker at Stanford. they got a great defense. And uh, I look at that as Utah having to travel into Stanford and I just say that when it comes down to toss-ups, whoever loses the turnover game to me loses the game. Yeah. That's how I look at it. All right. Well, that's a pretty good analysis. All right. When we come back, it's time to talk a little San Diego State Aztec football. They're coming in to take on the Broncos. We'll review that and more right here on Inside the Broncos Football in the West. back inside the Broncos football in the West brought to you by even green technology all right Jeff San Diego State's coming into town there's a nip in the air there's snow <laughs> on the ground there's snow in the hills yeah they're gonna wear black just to say hello to San Diego State as they come into the stadium blackout day all kinds of great things happening yeah but there's a 14 point spread on this game for a reason and I'm not sure exactly what the reason is, except that that Bronco offense is just smoking right now. Yeah, 38 points a game is, is what they're averaging, 500 yards. Uh, they're doing quite a bit, and I think that's, that's why it's there. And I think if you look at the last couple of times they've played San Diego State, I went back and looked. Uh, Hedrick threw an interception for a pick six. They had a San Diego State punt return for a touchdown, and then Goodale misses wide left for 43 yards, and Boise State lost in overtime. And then the year before that, it was Adam Oema left, Adam Oema right, oh, yeah. and he ran over Boise State, and they only scored 19 points, and Boise State lost. So are they better than those two efforts? Probably. I don't know if they're any better at 43-yard field goals to win games or whatever. They don't practice that much because they don't need to. But I just think it's a different Boise State team right now, and San Diego State's been banged up and poor play at quarterback. Well, a lot of people are looking at uh, a situation, and, you know, there's cause and effect in a lot of things. Uh, games coming down to kickers making field goals, that's an effect, not a cause. But when you look at the receiver core for Boise State, I look at something that has really had a dynamic change since Matt Miller went out. Now, it's obvious to everyone that that was a safety blanket for Grant Hedrick. And it's a beautiful safety blanket. The guy is one of the best receivers that's ever put on a Boise State uniform. But it's so much fun to watch the diversification of this passing game and all the guys that are getting involved, the development of Spurbeck, the development of Chaz Anderson, the development of McNichols, and all the different components. It's really been fun to watch. And it's what they do. It's, it's the progression of the Boise State offense from find Matt, if, if, you know, look for him first in this situation, to, okay, now read the safety, read the linebacker, and if this isn't there, check down, go here. And I don't know if Grant at times gets to level three or not. I was talking to Dan Hawkins about this. Quarterbacks like Ryan Dinwiddie, Kellen Moore started at level three, where then they react to what the defense does, and then they do something different. That's rare when you get a guy like that. I think Grant's answer, when you don't find the first two options, is he runs, and he runs pretty well. Well, we found out last week he runs really well. 300 yards uh, through the air and 100 yards on the ground is something that hasn't been done since Boise State came in to the uh, Division I level. So that was a pretty impressive performance. Now, Jay Ajayi has not had a lot of success. Eh, he's had marginal success against San Diego State's defense. This 3-3-5 defense that Rocky Long employs, it's different. It's weird. There's guys moving around. There's guys standing up. There's guys over here. Then they're gone. They're all over the place. Mm -hmm. But you would think with all that movement, isn't there a way that you can really attack that with the run? You would hope so, but, you know, 
San Diego State's only given up seven passing touchdowns. Wow. They only give up 20 points a game. They'll get pressure on a quarterback. They'll make an O-line double think what they're going to try to do because of the movement of the front seven or, or six or, or eight and, and five and however Rocky wants to do it. And so a lot of mistakes are produced. And I think that's what they have to guard against is calming down, making their keys and relaxing and then probably running right at them. Just run right at them because you never know where they're going to be. All right, well, let's flip the side of the ball and talk a little bit about offense for San Diego State. And it comes down to two basic players, Quinn Kaler, the quarterback, and Donnie Pumphrey, the running back. Pumphrey's at over 1,200 yards this season already. This kid's for real. He's, uh, as you said, you know, last year we saw the Muama thing, and that was a weird story once he went to the NFL, but that's a whole other deal. Right. But the Pumphrey kid's solid. Is Quinn Kaler the weak link, or has he gotten his act back together? No, he's been the weak link. Yeah, the good game against Idaho, which means nothing. Their defense, especially their back seven, is horrible. So I, I think Kaler, and Boise State the last four weeks has not done great. They're giving up 38 points a game. Defensively, they've struggled. So that's different. But I think Kaler, all overall for the season, has struggled, Poe. All San Diego State wants to do is run the football, control the clock, don't make mistakes at quarterback. I can see Rocky <laughs> from here. Don't make mistakes at quarterback and turn it over to my defense and get a couple of turnovers, play good special teams. Let's win. And that's what he wants to do. That's well, what he wants to do. Funny you should mention special teams because last week, big special teams gaff with uh, allowing a 100-yard kickoff return. Right. Uh, your thoughts real quickly on how that dynamic may play into this game. It's played into it the last two years. Well, DSG, uh, Sumner Garner is real critical to the special teams. Plays a lot of them. He had a cast on his arm. Now he's got a, a leg issue. They're going to have to replace him. That was a momentary lapse. They haven't had it happen to him, but they did block a punt. That's the good news. So if they can do that again, and remember, special teams in 2012, San Diego State blocked a punt for Boise State, put Boise State in some trouble. So special teams could be big here. All right. Well, bundle up tomorrow night for the San Diego State game. It's going to be a little nippy out there, so make sure you bring all the cold weather gear. Jeff will be with KBOI tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock for his pregame show. Yeah, look for us. Alan Noble Hall of Fame, the Ford Fan Zone there at 3 o'clock, and we'll take you all the way up to kickoff. And then every day, Idaho Sports Talk on KTIK, 93.1 The Ticket. You can hear Idaho Sports Talk from 3 to 6 o'clock daily. Great insight on that program. Tune it in. Hey, a big thank you to Steve's Hometown Motors uh, in Ontario and in Weezer. They do a great job sponsoring the show. And our major sponsor, Even Green Technology. If you've got a question on solar, they're the Treasure Valley's authority. We'll be back with more Inside the Broncos Football in the West next week. Inside the Broncos, Football in the West is brought to you by Even Green Technology, the Treasure Valley Solar Authority, and Steve's Hometown Ford and Steve's Hometown Toyota, 100% committed to your satisfaction. Also by Western Heating and Cooling, Turn to the Experts, and Leisure Time Spas and Hearth Products. Come see us at Leisure Time. You'll be glad you did.